So hi, my name's Glenn Brace. I'm the head of studio for Elevation. Is VR development different from sort of 2D console development? That comes up a lot. It's an interesting concept. I think the reality is it is quite different. Um, there's a lot of similarities, of course. Obviously, it's real-time dev. You know, we use Unreal. You know, obviously, as I've rendered out there in bits and bobs, but yeah, there's commonality in terms of process, how to make models, how to write blueprints and bits and bobs like that. So that stuff can kind of take the bait of good software development. There's definitely loads of crossover in that. But I think what's really truly interesting, alongside the sort of immersiveness, is um, actually the difference VR presents to the experience to the end user from a console game. So it's very traditional for sort of 2D games um, to have core game loops to drive the player forward. It's always about driving the player forward, take part in that loop uh, and, and move on. And you kind of kill the dead space in between. And what we've discovered is VR is obviously, if done right, very immersive and you can get immersed in that fiction. Uh, so taking Phantom, for example, it, we found we had all of these um, challenges and enemies and in VR it was overwhelming because VR is an emotional amplifier. So what you would do in a 2D game, you know, it would be fine. Like just for example, having a character who jump over a big cliff, you do it, okay, you die, don't matter, you do it again and oh, maybe you get it right, cool. It's a small beat. In VR, leaping over a giant gorge where you perceive depth and if you get it wrong, you fall down, you know, is quite an event. You know, the emotions peak. So you'll find the measurement of reaction from a simple action from a VR game compared to a console game is vastly different. So just from a spacing game design, it's really important that you allow time to just be. We say in VR, time to be. So it's like a, a, a time to calm down because you've got to sort of peak those emotions, drop those emotions. And sometimes because things aren't so sort of predetermined with animations, like press a button to do X or Y, um, you know, you have hands. It is a performance. It's a physical performance because the player has direct control about what they can do, where they go, what they interact with at any point. And if you don't meet those expectations, you break the immersion. So it's really important. You've got gameplay loops, but you have to have enough gaps those loops to give agency to the user, to the player. So a lot of the typical uh, like game design flow and core loops and what you deem is important to the user massively shift when you go into the VR space. Like an interaction is essentially an animation that looks cool. It's about to look cool and it sells a character and a story. Interactions in VR, they've got to be ergonomic. You've got to be able to do them and they've got to be satisfying. And they've got to meet that expectation, that sense of tension, sense of weight. And if you don't do it, your expectation drops and you're taken out of the experience. So it's, it's how many you do and if they're deep enough and do they support that immersion? There's a finer level of detail just from interaction than you'd ever get in VR from say a traditional dev. So it's very different. And I think the priorities shift. And I also think the end goals of the features and what you make shift as well, because going back to the performance factor, it's not a predetermined animation set. It's very important that you allow a player to imbue a certain character or take part in role play. For example, you know, if you're going to be a cowboy, you, know, you can present a cowboy in a game, you are a cowboy, you see it third person, you see the action play out, that's fine. Yeah, but in VR, if you can say, right, you are a cowboy, and then you give them a tool that enables them to role play no matter that, and of their own agency, they shoot and blow the end of the guns, the smoke of them, and it works because you can, they're going to start behaving like that. And are they going to be a semi Sam cowboy or are they going to be a Clint Eastwood cool cat? Yeah, totally up to them, but they need to be supported. And that's very player driven and it's a sense of role play that you can put the, the, the user in the sense of uh, power and control and what they do with that. And again, that is a high level of agency you just don't get from sort of traditional medium. So that's one of the, some of the few things, but uh, the devil's in the detail. And the reality is you can do a VR game if you've got really good sort of 2D experience, but if you really want to make the most of the medium, then I think there is definitely a lot to learn and a lot of traits to actually make the best of a VR tone.